Hey guys, welcome back. In this section, we're going to be um, going back to our my Ruby blog app, and we're going to create some controllers, um, possibly create some views, and, and really get started on the development of the app. Because up to this point, what well, basically what we've done is a lot of learning, learning the fundamentals of Ruby and Ruby on Rails, and we did set up our application environment in Chapter One which sometimes can be the hardest part of the of anything any rails app so um, if you remember in chapter one you should have uh, cre we created an app and then we deployed it to Heroku um, so what I want to do first is rename our app so if you want to go to your Heroku account Heroku login and ignore this test blog 300 that's just uh, something else but if you went along in chapter one you probably have some crazy name like this it, it isn't this it won't be the same because they have to be unique um, that's why they have these these crazy names so what we're gonna do is rename it not through the website but through the the um, command line interface so go back to your git bash it should look like this, this red icon. Okay, click on that. And we want to get into our apps directory. So let's change directory to the C drive and then to the sites folder. Now, if we list the contents in the sites folder, you'll see we have the My Ruby blog folder that we created for our app. So let's switch to that. And you can see if we list the contents, it has our, our entire app structure. Um, this is these are all the folders and files that we went through in the last section um, in the the PowerPoint presentation. So what I want to do now is log into Heroku. Her Heroku, sorry, I keep calling it Heroku. And we want to do that by just typing Heroku login. And from here, you want to enter the email address that you used and your password. And this is for Heroku.com. So now we get an authentication successful message. So now we're logged into Heroku. And what I'd like to do now is just uh, do a test push uh, just to make sure that, that our files are going where they're supposed to. So what you can do here is let's just let's just edit something. Um, just something, something really simple and then we'll re-push it to Heroku. So if you go to the sites folder and then the MyRuby blog folder you'll see um, why don't we just um, we can do anything. Let's just go into the um, into the view for the home page. Uh, I don't want to use that. I want to use Notepad plus uh, plus. You can use whatever you want as far as a text editor. So let's just say uh, let's just change the the to my and save it. So now if we go back. Let's do a git add. If you remember, this is what it adds everything, all the files. If we use this this period, you could also do uh, individual files, you know, something like that. So we're just going to add everything. Um, and if you get this message, uh, ignore it. It's just something to do with the f the file, the naming of the files, and in, in Windows as opposed to Linux. So just ignore that. After you do the git add, let's do the git um, commit, and then we'll use the A and the M tag options, and then we'll just write, uh, this is just a comment, so we'll just say test commit, I mean, yeah, test commit. So it added us to, the, to our local repository, now we have to push it, so git push. Sorry, git push Heroku master. So hopefully this goes okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Okay, our app is detected. That means that it found our remote repository. Okay. Database looks good. Now we have a, a Postgres database. If you remember, you should have installed it and you should have a utility called PG Admin, I believe. Um, and we need to start our local server and database, which I'll do in a second. All right, so it looks like everything went good. Uh, let's go to here. It's not, we're not gonna see any changes here. Well, actually, if we go into the settings, I'm sorry, not the settings, the activity, you'll see we deployed less than a minute ago so you could this you can see all your actions that you all your interactions with Heroku will be on this activity page now what I want to do uh, is rename our app and you can do it from here but uh, I usually do it from the command line it's very easy now remember everything is unique all all app names on Heroku are unique so we have to pick one that's that hasn't been used so hopefully my Ruby blog hasn't been used but I mean it, it might there's a very good chance it, it is so what we want to do is do Heroku let's see if I remember this apps um, rename and here we want to put our the name we want to use so let's do my Ruby blog and two hyphens and then app and then our old name which is this crazy name right here what is it nameless stream 1006 all right and yeah it looks like our that name wasn't taken so now we have an app called my ruby blog deployed on Heroku so if we go here this might take a minute to update you'll see it hasn't changed yet and if we try to click on settings and go to it it gives us an error uh, this should go away within five minutes or so alright so we renamed our app now what I want to do is generate a controller um, we went over MVC quite a bit uh, model view controller and the controller is usually uh, in my opinion it should have been named CMV because you will always start with the controller and with the controller you can communicate with the model which is usually um, at the database so that's where we would get certain data that's stored on the database and then it goes back to the controller and then it goes to a view which is what the user sees so we're going to start with the controller and we can generate by using the generate script so we'll say rails and then generate and you don't have to use generate um, actually you know what we didn't run our server yet so scratch that let's open up our PG admin um, database you guys can't see my start menu um, just go to the start menu and look for hold on a second Postgres SQL and then PG admin 3 now this is just locally uh, our, our app has actually been deployed and is live on the web um, actually let's check that out now let's re reload see if it changed no nope, name didn't change yet but it's already live and, and we're using a separate production database that Heroku is, has provided us. This is just so we can run it locally. Um, and I believe we already created the actual database. So let's connect to the server um, and enter your password that you set up. And go to databases and you can see my Ruby blog. You click on it and it should start up and um, everything looks good so the database is running just make sure you keep this open 
Uh, remember, this is just locally. Uh, when, when our app is deployed on Heroku, that version of our app, we don't need to run this. So don't worry about that. And the same with the server. Because right now, what I'm going to do is start the server. Because we're going to be able to go to HTTP local host um, and then a colon and then 3000 which is a port and you'll see if we go to it now nothing happened it's it's not it's not running but if we go rails server or just rails s uh, wait a minute oh rails s not rail so now our web brick server is running so again we need to keep this open so what you want to do is open another command line and then you have to navigate back to see uh, sites and then back to um, my Ruby blog alright so just make sure you did that and now let's reload this and we should see our home page um, oh no what's this so now we're going to have to do some real live troubleshooting, which can be a good thing. So, um, so the first thing that comes to mind is to check the database configuration file. So go to our app folder. Where is it? I'll just reopen it. C sites, my Ruby blog, and the database configure, configuration file is in config and it's this database YML uh, you know what hold on a second let me just make these so they automatically use note notepad plus plus so that'll do all the YML files looks like the Ruby files already use notepad plus plus alright so what is this stuff um, just I'm gonna close this and we're going to open database.yml and just check everything out and this could actually be the problem right here is that this isn't lined up this file has to be absolutely perfect there should be a space after every colon okay looks good alright let's save that now we saved it so let's go back actually we're gonna to want to restart our rail server so go to the server command line and press control C to stop it and then just start it again with rails s okay so let's go back here and reload and still having the problem hmm. alright well what I'm gonna do is pause the video and check this out and come back and I'll let you know what's going on alright guys so I found the problem and it wasn't in the code it was actually in my database my my um, database user credentials weren't weren't right for some reason so um, you I'm pretty sure that you're not gonna have the problem I just had because it was it was local to my to my um, local server and database so if you but if you do have that issue um, make sure that that database dot YML file make sure that has the the correct credentials and um, I just started a new server with a new database but I kept it the same name my Ruby blog so um, so we shouldn't have any more issues with that uh, one thing I also noticed is that our name here in Heroku we changed it and it's not changed and the reason why is because after we did the rename we didn't push to the with to the server so that's what we gotta do now so what we want to do is just to git add all and then we want to do a git commit and add on the am option and then for a comment we'll just say renamed app so that's the commit so now we get to do the push which is git push heroku master So hopefully this all right, it looks like it's going 
and then after this after this push um, within a few minutes we should see our, our app name change in the in the Heroku website and then hopefully we're back on track still going so this I mean this push we only will need to do this when we're done say done for the day um, with our code then we push it if you commit it when you commit it doesn't actually go to the to the um, server it's just locally so you have to push in order to get it to go to the Heroku server so if we reload it's still not changed uh, I'd say a couple more minutes we'll try again so we can go back to my local server not ECPS. local host port 3000 and you'll see this is where we were seeing that active record error uh, which is now fixed so let's try this reload still hasn't it hasn't changed it here but if we go to um, what did we name it my Ruby my Ruby blog we should be able to still access it this way See here we go right here. It it did change. It's just that screen hasn't updated yet. Our backend screen. So this is our actual live deployment URL, myrubyblog.herokoapp.com. So reload, and now you'll see here it was also updated. We can now go into the settings, and we can see the activity. Um, where we pushed four minutes ago so uh, there was a couple unexpected twists in this section so uh, in the next section we're gonna create a controller and, and um, model and view and do all that good stuff so I will see you in the next video